inclusive education ie is a new approach towards educating the children with disability and learning difficulties with that of the normal ones within the same roof it seeks to address the learning needs of all children with a specific focus on those who are vulnerable to marginalization and exclusion it implies all learners with or without disabilities being able to learn together through access to common preschool provisions schools and community educational setting with an appropriate network of support services this is possible only in flexible education system that assimilates the needs of diverse range of learners and adapts itself to meet these needs inclusion is not an experiment to be tested but a value to be followed all the children whether they are disabled or not have the right to education as they are the future citizens of the country in the prevailing indian situation resources are insufficient even to provide quality mainstream schools for common children it is unethical and impracticable to put children with special needs to test or to prove anything in a research study to live and learn in the mainstream of school and community the principle of inclusive education was adopted at the world conference on special needs education access and quality at salamanca spain in the year 1994 and was restated at the world education forum at dakar senegal in the year 2000 the idea of inclusion is further supported by the united nations standard rules on equalization of opportunities for person with disability proclaiming participation and equality for all of late a consensus has emerged among indian intellectuals and pedagogues for adopting inclusive education in mainstream schools the term special need education sne has come into use as a replacement for the term special education as the older one was mainly understood to refer to the education of all those children and youth who need to arise from disabilities or learning difficulties the statement affirms those with special educational needs must have access to regular schools which should accommodate them within child center pedagogy capable of meeting these needs moreover the concept of special need education extends beyond those who may be included in handicapped categories to cover those who are failing in school for a wide variety of other reasons that are known to be likely to impede a child's optimal progress whether or not this more broadly defined group of children are in need of additional support depends on the extent to which school needs to support their curriculum teaching and or to provide additional human or material resources so as to simulate efficient and effective learning for these pupils but marginalization and exclusion of these pupils result in the growth of inferiority complexes among them and their parents or guardians this leads the vision of inclusive education inclusive education aims at integrated development of children with special needs and normal children through mainstream schooling to develop curriculum for special education and its inclusion in general teacher preparation programs rehabilitation council of india rci made a historic collaboration with national council for teacher education ncte on january 19th 2005 unesco 2003 para 4 Inclusive education means that school should accommodate all children regardless of their physical, intellectual, social, emotional, linguistic and other conditions. 
This should include disabled and gifted children, street and working children, children from remote or nomadic population, children from linguistic, ethnic or cultural minorities, and children from other disadvantaged or marginalized areas or groups. Today, it is widely accepted that inclusion maximizes the potential of the vast majority of students, ensures their rights, and is the preferred educational approach for the 21st century. Unfortunately, the philosophy has not always been widely held. Our thinking and acceptance has evolved rapidly over the last century and continues to evolve in response to federal and state law along with our changing social and political beliefs. Now let us think back when compulsory public education began near the turn of the century, no public school programs existed for students with disabilities. Special classes at first did not exist. Later, they were developed as a place for students who could not meet the standards and keep pace with their fellow classmates. By the year 1950, special education public programs were available in many school districts, but some undesirable outcomes were becoming apparent. Many authorities in the field agreed that segregated special classes were not an appropriate educational setting for most students with special needs, for it was clear that educating students with special needs in isolated settings minimized rather than maximized their potential. Simultaneously, the civil rights movement was in its great surge and the fights for equal rights and non-discriminatory laws were being culminated in the US. Supreme Court with the historic Brown decision, in the year 1954, the case of Brown versus the Board of Education established the principle that School segregation denies students equal educational opportunity. Although the decision referred to racial segregation, it began to influence our thinking about people with disabilities. The thinking went something like this. If separate is not equal, what about our children with special needs being denied the right to a free and public education? or being placed in separate segregated classrooms. In the early 1970s, landmark civil rights legislation opened the door for all children with special needs to receive a free and public education and ensured equal opportunity for students to participate in the full range of school activities. In the year 1997, Reauthorization of the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, IDEA, specifically supports inclusive thinking and practices. IDEA calls for involving students with special needs in general education, curricula, assessment practices, and classrooms. Recognizing that traditional strategies result in a lack of learning outcomes for students with special needs, Relative to outcomes of comparable peers without special education labels, IDEA encourages general and special education teachers to work together for the benefit of each and every student. The committee reports that accompanied the new law to Congress explains the legislator's intent. That is, inclusion is a philosophy of acceptance and flexibility. On January 8, 2002, the No Child Left Behind Act was signed into law. The legislation bolsters the philosophy that the majority of students with special needs be moved out of segregated classrooms and given the appropriate strategies, accommodations, and teaching styles to match their unique learning styles. The No Child Left Behind Act builds on four principles for education reform accountability for results, doing what works based on scientific research, expanded parent options, and expanded local control and flexibility. No child left behind has changed the landscape of education by shifting the focus from compliance to outcome.
It requires us to measure the progress of all our students so that every child can realize the great promise of America. The term integration signifies the process of interaction of disabled children and normal children in the same educational setting. Of course, there are two separate terms which are very often synonymously used with integration. These two terms are one, mainstreaming, two, normalization. Integration means providing special services within the regular school, supporting regular teachers and administration. Having students with disparities follow the same schedule as the non-disabled students. Arranging for disabled students to receive education in regular community environments when appropriate. Teaching all children to understand human differences. As general education classrooms include more and more diverse students, teachers realize the value of accepting each student as unique. Special educators understand that Effective general education practices really are appropriate for students with special needs and general educators often turns to special educators for additional ways to teach their increasingly diverse group of students. Some of the specific classroom practices recommended in national reports are less whole class teacher directed instruction, less student passivity, less prizing and rewarding of silence in the classroom, less classroom time devoted to fill in the blank worksheets, dittos, workbooks and other street work, less student time spent reading textbooks and basal readers, less effort by teachers to thinly cover large amounts of material, less rot memorization of facts and details, less stress on competition and grades, less use of pull-out special programs, less use of and reliance on standardized tests, more experimental, inductive, hands-on learning, more active learning, more enacting and modeling the principles of democracy in school, more choice for students, more time devoted to reading full original books, more deep study of a smaller number of topics. Teaching and learning. Schools are accommodating diversity with a variety of teaching strategies and different degrees of mastery. Inclusive learning environments are reflections of the change in teaching and learning to help all students meet high expectations. Educators refer to a classroom or a place where teaching and learning takes place as a learning environment. They disagree about what type of learning environment delivers the most effective teaching to students of differing abilities. Definition An inclusive learning environment is a school or classroom where students of every ability level receive teaching in the same place. This means that Particularly able students learn alongside those who have special educational needs such as dyslexia, dyspraxia and attention deficit disorder. Teaching methods. Teachers differentiate between students of different abilities by giving them tasks of varying difficulty and complexity. A single activity may pose different levels of challenge and have different outcomes depending on the student or a teacher may give a different task to each student according to his ability. Necessary resources. Although once hailed as a way to increase achievement while decreasing cost, full inclusion does not save money, reduce students' needs or improve academic outcomes. It merely moves the special educational professionals out of their own classrooms and into a corner of the general classroom. To avoid harm to the academic education of students with disabilities, full panoply of services and resources is required 
including adequate supports and services for the student, well designed individualized education programs, professional development for all teachers involved general and special educators alike, time for teachers to plan, meet, create and evaluate the students together, reduced class based on the severity of the student needs, professional skill development in the areas of cooperative learning, peer tutoring, adaptive curriculum. After independence, the Indian constitution directed the state to ensure provision of basic education to all children up to the age of 14 years. The education of people with disabilities was, however, not explicit in the early constitutional provisions except for guaranteeing similar rights for people with disabilities as other members of society. The Education Commission of 1966, known as Kothari Commission, drew attention to the education of children with disabilities. In 1974, for the first time, the necessity of integrated education was explicitly emphasized under the scheme for integrated education for disabled children, IEDC. In pursuit of the goal of providing basic education for all, the National Policy on Education 1986 and its follow-ups actions have been major landmarks. The World Declaration on Education for All adopted in the year 1990 gave further boost to the various processes already set in motion in the country. The Rehabilitation Council of India Act 1992 initiated a training program for the development of professionals to respond to the needs of students with disabilities. The enactment of the People with Disability Act in 1996 provided legislative support. This act makes it mandatory to provide free education to children with disabilities in an appropriate environment until the age of 18 years. These acts have been instrumental in bringing about a perceptive change improvement in the attitude of government, NGOs and people with disabilities. In recent years, two major initiatives have been launched by the government for achieving the goals of Universalization of Elementary Education, UEE, the District Primary Education Program, DPEP, in 1994 and the Sarva Siksha Abhiyan, SSA, in 2002. Programs launched in the recent past have been able to make only a limited impact in terms of increasing the participation of children with disabilities in formal education. This situation needs to change. A focused effort is required. Keeping in view recent initiatives on inclusive education, a comprehensive review is necessary to help in better understanding the present status of education of children with disabilities and how inclusive education can be promoted. First five-year plan. This witnessed the launching of a small unit by the Ministry of Education for the visually impaired in the year 1947. Subsequently, a training center for adults with visual impairments was established. Second five-year plan. Under the Ministry of Education, a National Advisory Council for the Physically Challenged started functioning to advise the central government on issues concerning education, training and employment of the disabled. Third five-year plan. Attention was given to rural areas to facilitate the training and rehabilitation of the physically challenged. The government formulated policies around some services. First, planning employment exchange for the physically challenged. Second, teaching and provision of work facilities in the home itself or neighborhood for those who are not mobile. Third, 
provision of recreation facilities for the physically challenged. Fourth, at least 3% of job reservations and job facilities made available for the physically challenged. Fourth, five-year plan. More emphasis was given to preventive work for people with visual, speech and hearing impairments. National centers for the physically challenged were instituted to serve as demonstration projects in various parts of the country and provide necessary training facilities. Sixth five-year plan. National policies were made around provision of community-oriented disability, prevention and rehabilitation services to promote self-reliance, economic independence and social integration of the differently able in the community and comprehensive primary health care. The tenth plan aims to provide universal elementary education by the end of the plan. It also aims to provide basic education for the unreached segments and special groups. The special interventions and strategies like pedagogic improvement and adoption of child center practices are focused on the groups like scheduled caste and scheduled tribes, working children, children with disabilities, urban deprived children, children from minority groups, children below poverty line, migratory children and in the hardest to reach groups. A policy of inclusion needs to be implemented in all schools and throughout Indian education system. The participation of all children needs to be ensured in all spheres of their life in and outside the school. Schools need to become centers that prepare children for life and ensure that all children, especially the differently abled children from marginalized sections and children in difficult circumstances, get the maximum benefit of this critical area of education. Opportunities to display talents and share these with peers are powerful tools in nurturing motivation and involvement among children. In our schools, we tend to select some children over and over again. While this small group benefits from these opportunities, becoming more self-confident and visible in the school, other children experience repeated disappointment and progress through school with a constant logging for recognition and peer approval. Excellence and ability may be singled out for appreciation, but at the same time, opportunities need to be given to all children and their specific abilities need to be recognized and appreciated. This includes children with disabilities who may need assistance or more time to complete their assigned task. It would be even better if, while planning for such activities, the teacher discusses them with all the children in the class and ensures that each child is given an opportunity to contribute. When planning, therefore, teachers must pay special attention to ensure the participation of all. This would become a marker of their effectiveness as teachers. Excessive emphasis on competitiveness and individual achievement is beginning to mark many of our schools, especially private schools catering to the urban middle classes. Very often, as soon as children join, houses are allocated to them. Thereafter, almost every activity in the school is counted for marks that go into house points, adding up to an end-of-the-year price. Such house loyalties seem to have the superficial effect of getting all children involved and excited about winning points for their house, but also distorts educational aims where excessive competitiveness promotes doing better than someone else as an aim rather than excelling on one's own terms and for the satisfaction of doing something well. Inclusive education, i.e., is a new approach towards educating the children with disability and learning difficulties with that of normal ones within the same roof. 
Of late, a consensus has emerged among Indian intellectuals and pedagogues for adopting inclusive education in mainstream schools. The term special need education (SNE) has come into use as a replacement for the term special education as older one was mainly understood to refer the education of all those children and youth who needs arise from disabilities or learning difficulties. The statement affirms those with special educational needs must have access to regular schools which should accommodate them within child-centered pedagogy capable of meeting these needs. This leads the vision of inclusive education. Inclusive education aims at integrated development of children with special needs and normal children through mainstream schooling. To develop curriculums for special education and its inclusion in general, teacher preparation programs, Rehabilitation Council of India, RCI, made a historic collaboration with National Council for Teacher Education, NCTE, on January 19, 2005. Fewer than 5% of children who have a disability are in schools. In India, special education as a separate system of education for disabled children outside the mainstream education system evolved way back in the year 1880. Consequent on the success of international experiments in placing children with disabilities in regular schools, the Planning Commission in 1971 included in its plan a program for integrated education. The government launched the Integrated Education for Disabled Children IEDC scheme in December 1974. It was a centrally sponsored scheme aimed to provide educational opportunities to children with special needs in regular schools and to facilitate their achievement and retention. All the schools in the area are expected to enroll children with disabilities. Training programs were also given to the teachers. Under PIED, there has been a significant increase in the number of not only mildly disabled but also severely disabled children with the number of orthopedically handicapped children far outstripping other disabled children. Thank you. Mm -hmm.